fine. Okay, everybody, lights on. We're gonna call our meeting to order. Let the minutes reflect all members are present. The first thing we're gonna do is set the agenda. Anybody like to add or subtract from the agenda today? Board president, board of managers, staff had no changes. Okay, any members? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we accept the agendas presented today. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approval of the minutes. Madam President, I move to approve the April 8th, 2019 workshop. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Madam President, I move to approve the April 10th, 2019 regular meeting minutes. Second. Second. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Madam President, I move to approve the April 15th, 2019 workshop minutes. My goodness. Second. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the first thing is the consent agenda. Nick? Good morning. Hello. Board President, Board of Managers, we have uh, five permits with Caprock items ready for your consideration. Uh, on file 19023, we do have some proposed changes that you will find on page 39 of your packet. I'll bring it up here and show you what we're proposing to add or change. So on to page 40, the top of the page, we would like to insert an additional Caprock item, number four, you'll see on your screen, that is in regards to the establishment of easements on the property if the city uh, would like them. The district's rule is a vehicle by which the city, in this case Matamita, can obtain them. That does shift our numbering down for five and six, and then we'd also add uh, Caprock item seven, which is a recommendation to the applicant that they have communication with Valley Branch Watershed District in regards to a potential buffer along Echo Lake. So those are the changes that we're proposing for that one. Uh, I can go further, uh, but I'm happy to entertain any questions. <coughs> any questions for Nick on this? Mm -hmm. No? No questions? No. Okay, I'll have a motion. Well, I do have, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thought we was talking. Uh, page 53. 53. This would be for 19-034. Just before, the last sentence before the discussion of wetlands tells us that the applicant is responsible to confer with any agency with authority over the contamination and or reuse and otherwise to ensure that the site stormwater management conforms to sound design practices, et cetera. Um, it's kind of vague that they're supposed to talk to somebody, whoever they're supposed to talk to, but earlier uh, on page 51, 1H, we told to provide documentation of NPDES permit has been applied for and it's submitted to the MPCA. So are you thinking that 1H covers this discussion on page 53? Uh, President Priner, Manager uh, Bradley, uh, Board of Managers. Uh, no, I would refer you to page 52, item three. I think is a is a better capture of of the issue at the end of uh, finding two regarding stormwater and reporting. So that's along the lines of our uh, con uh, issues when contamination arise and that they have that dialogue with the state agencies responsible. That's great, I, I had not picked that up, thank you. Yeah, sure. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, motion. Madam President, I move to uh, 
I move to cap rock permit 14 018, 18 099, 19 023, 19 031, and 19 034. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, at this time we have open mic. Anybody in the audience that would like to speak today on anything that isn't on the agenda? Anybody? Okay, seeing none, we'll move forward. Number one, Kyle. Madam President, members of the board, um, <clears throat> for your consideration today, we uh, have a draft uh, grant application to the DNR's Flood Hazard Mitigation Program. Um, we've been talking uh, with our partners on the Ramsey County Ditch 2, 3, and 5 Basic Water Management Petition Project, uh, cities of Roseville, New Brighton, and St. Anthony. Um, we're moving forward with that uh, effort, as you know. Uh, we're in the middle of phase two. And um, one opportunity that has come up in discussion with DNR staff and our partners uh, is the potential to submit that future suite of projects into the flood hazard mitigation program. Uh, so what we have um, prepared is, a again, a draft application for that grant program. Um, we are uh, using the uh, rough cost estimate that we have at this time. Again, it is preliminary, uh, but that is found in our uh, draft watershed management plan for 2020 through 29 of $20 million uh, total cost for this effort. Again, it is a, a preliminary number. Um, the grant program is a, uh, up to 50% program, uh, that, and projects of this size are usually submitted, and um, if funded, it goes through state bonding bills. So uh, we are asking the DNR for $10 million uh, in this application. Um, uh, again, working with DNR staff, we're uh, of the understanding that as the project um, becomes a little more defined as to what we're going to build, what suite of projects are in play uh, down in that area, that we'd have the ability to refine this, refine the budget numbers as well. Um, but at this time, it allows uh, the DNR to get this project on their list of, uh, of um, demonstrating the need to the legislature for this bonding cycle that's coming up uh, here in May. So um, with that, uh, certainly happy to answer any questions you have about it. Um, staff is recommending that board adopt resolution 2019-14, which would direct the administrator uh, to submit the application to DNR. Um, I will note one, um, one change to the resolution itself on page 60 of your packet, uh, just the addition um, on the resolution, uh, or therefore be it resolved, uh, adding a little bit of language uh, so that it reads uh, uh, that the Rice Creek Watershed District Board of Managers hereby authorizes the district administrator to submit the grant, attached grant application uh, with any non-material changes uh, to the DNR program, et cetera. Um, and that way, if there are needed changes down the road working with DNR, you know, we can work with them and keep things moving efficiently. So um, with that, again, open to any questions. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Twenty million dollars, mm -hmm. ten million. I mean, I had no, no objection to mm -hmm. applying for a ten million dollar grant. We'll see what happens. But then we have the three cities, and we have twenty ten million left, mm -hmm. right? How can anybody afford this? Are you then trying? If say, if you get this grant, it does it preclude the fact that with the remaining ten million, you could maybe go clean water or somebody else to get any more money, you know, through Bowser or anything? So Can you still get more money? Because that $10 million is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, correct. Uh, Madam President, Manager Hockey, um, you know, we're very at a very preliminary stage with, with right. many of these projects, as you know. Um, some of the projects that are, in, that are being considered and, and being looked at by uh, the district engineer right now, some of them have the ability potentially to be funded through some other means as there are water quality improvement components to some of these, so possibly clean water funds and others. Uh, some of the projects, again, are more regional in nature and might be appropriate for the district to have a little more financial stake in than the partners. Some of the projects might go the other way. And so uh, ultimately the uh, phase three of the petition, once we get a slate of projects uh, done in phase two, in phase three we will look at what some of those cost allocations might be. Um, Right now, again, we're, we're, we're getting this in there. We don't want to miss an opportunity to bring Absolutely. some money in. Um, but no, I think the final cost allocations, uh, that is something 
uh, that would happen at, at a later date. And, and I will note, I, I had a note on my memo here, um, you know, submit all the application and even an, an award, a potential award of funds does not um, bind the district board into actually doing anything until we, you know, sign on the grant application and go down the process. But Thanks, Kyle, mm -hmm. because uh, anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other I'm questions? Okay. Madam President, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to add to what Kyle is saying, too, is also note that the, this project would not uh, likely be anything that would be done in a single year oh, or no. two years. It would be over a fairly substantial time period. There's a lot of different ways that can be used to finance the project, as uh, uh, Kyle alluded to, to fund it through different means. So. Um, those kind of details will be something that we'll be looking at uh, um, a couple of years down the line here. But, but again, as Kyle said, we just want to try to get our foot in the door with this, and, th and you know, and then you know, we aren't really committing ourselves to anything, and we can uh, um, uh, look at the allocations uh, at a later date. I'm not objecting to it, like I said. Mm -hmm. I understand. Get it going as fast as you can, but I just want to get <coughs> the realistic part of the uh, rainy mm -hmm. ten million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that the grant, though, is a two-year biennial grant, and that you would need to spend it for a fairly short, finite period of time. And we've not yet identified a single project in this. Are we uh, getting ahead of ourselves? Would we be better off asking for a reasonable amount of money for planning purposes to actually develop a plan and then go in for the $20 million? Uh, Madam President, uh, Manager Bradley, my understanding is that uh, DNR would like to see the the whole suite submitted. They think that's appropriate at this time, uh, at the level we're at. Should it garner enough attention to be included, at, be at that time, I believe we can sharpen our pencil and see what, because again, as Chris said, this will be multiple phases of, of potential projects, so I don't think we would expect to receive a 10 million chunk at any one time, even if it were to be selected in this cycle. I think that we, it would be pieces of it. If I could add on, yeah, in my conversations with uh, Mr. Lynch and Lacasmo uh, at the DNR, they, uh, they were interested to know about the phases uh, of this project. It's very likely that this will have multiple phases and that um, this is not necessarily just going to be for one biennium. They would want us to put in the placeholder, if you will, to make sure that the full project <coughs> is identified. And then as we refine that, we will work with staff at the DNR to develop this into phases. And ultimately, it's going to also be needing to be communicated to the legislature, even if it is not something that's completely ripe for this next biennium. Um, it gets us in in the process of communicating with Mr. Lynch at the program and then identifying the phases as they come forward. Um, so it's it's a fluid process. They understand that, we understand that. Um, but the key is you have to have it in the hopper to, to identify the need in order for that to even be eligible and to and allow the DNR to then um, show that the legislature that it's even, even in play. So that's what this is. It's kind of a preliminary step. Madam President. Mm -hmm. I, I want to reemphasize what Phil has said because the day we were down at the DNR building that day and uh, the dis preliminary discussion, first discussion took place with Baca Smoke. Those were the first words out of his mouth was get in line, you know, and so that's we, we need to do this. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Kyle. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to make a motion that we... Um, Adopt resolution number 2019-14, authorizing the submittal of a flood damage reduction hazard mitigation grant application for basic water management project 2017-01. I'll just read thou, therefore be resolved that the Race Creek Watershed District Board of Managers hereby authorizes the district administrator to submit the attached uh, and, and any other additional materi material changes Grant application, somewhere in there, oh, you wanted to say it, Kyle. Grant application, the DNR Flood Damage Reduction Hazard Mitigation Grant Program to execute any application documents as, any, as may be required on advice of council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Kyle, would you clarify where you want that, please? Yep. Um, it should be, uh, so the language addition should be, uh, I'll read here, uh, hereby authorizes the district administrator to submit the attached grant application 
with any non-material changes uh, to the DNR flood damage reduction hazard mitigation grant program, et cetera. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Be roll call. Waller? Yes. Hockey? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Wagman? Yes. Priner? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, we're on number two. Consider board. the motion. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, board President, Board of Managers, starting on page 73, your packet. Um, this is for consideration of findings of order for uh, related to AWJD3. Uh, at its regular meeting on April 10th, the board voted to indefinitely postpone consideration of findings and an order for the repair of AWJD3 and through resolution 1911. Postponement was adopted so that the board could consider the potential impacts of House File 2314, Senate File 2317 on the basis of funding presented at their repair hearing on AWJD3 and the board's ability to execute the repair under its current budgeting assumption. That'll, that al also allowed the board to, con to determine conditions upon which the repair could be ordered without impact from the proposed bills. Uh, John Kolb is here. Um, he'll go through a little bit more about what was discussed via consensus at the special workshop on the 15th, and then uh, he or I will be glad to answer any qu follow-up questions as necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cole. Madam President, managers, at your workshop on the 15th, we discussed the proposed or the possible impact of the two bills in question. Uh, we talked about uh, broader issues related to how they affect all programs uh, of the district in your current budgeting processes and assumptions. Um, specific to Onoka Washington JD3, we determined that if the bills were not passed in this session uh, because of the current status of available funds for the Onoka Washington JD3 repair and the proposal that it be built <coughs> in 2020, that if uh, this session were to end without passage of the bills, that you could proceed upon the basis that you presented at your public hearing related to the repair uh, without any risk of the impact of those bills. And I believe it was a consensus of the board to bring it back here today for a motion to remove the postponement and place it for consideration at the June 12, 2019 regular meeting of the Board of Managers. And we've prepared a uh, motion to that extent. Uh, also included that in that motion was direction from the board that the future order contain language that would address possible future changes, statutory changes to the district's funding authority um, just as a, as a safe harbor should something like that happen. Um, and I think there's some future discussion about having that in other orders and resolutions as well. So uh, we've prepared the, the motion that would affect the consensus uh, direction of the board at your workshop on the 15th. Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Cole or Bill? Any further questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Madam President, I move that the indefinite postponement of consideration of resolution 2019-11 be removed and that consideration of resolution 2019-11 be set for the board's regular meeting on June 12, 2019. Further, that the board's attorney be directed to revise resolution 2019-11 to include a statement addressing potential legislative change to the district's current funding authorities. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? I on do have one question. Oh. Are, are we going to be discussing this anywhere before the June 12th? We have workshop on the 10th. That's right, we do. We'd have okay. workshop before. Do you, you want enough. further discussion on that? I do, because I'm... Well, we'll know then what the legislature is. Think this is a mistake. But so it'll be just a common We'll We'll put it on our agenda if, if it's an yeah. item that's still okay. open. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, annual report. No, uh, uh, yes. policy revision, I'm sorry. Board of President, Board of Managers, starting on page 75, you'll find cover letter as well as resolution 1913 uh, related to uh, delegation of WACA, uh, WACA delegation resolution. Historically, back on the two, uh, August of 20, 2004, the board adopted resolution 4 10 and uh, 9097. Both were delegated, delegating that the district administrator the authority to to uh, make decisions under the Wetland Conservation Act related to exemptions, no loss, boundary, and wetland type determinations. 
It delegated to the uh, administrator further authority for certain replacement plans. This delegation is similar to what permit applications under district's regulatory program. Uh, district Kolb, or district attorney Kolb is here to answer any questions related to this resolution. Uh, it's a, a policy matter uh, related to uh, a new revision to those resolutions identifying a specific uh, a specific, specific area uh, needed to clarify and to further uh, move forward with uh, with delegation. Okay, thank you. Cool. Madam President, managers, uh, the administrator outlined the two prior uh, resolutions, 0410 and 097, uh, both of which under the Wetland Conservation Act delegated certain, certain decision-making authority to your administrator. Uh, in discussing more recent Wetland Conservation Act applications with staff, uh, we did note that the two, neither of the two policies contained the same language that is contained in your regulatory delegations, allowing those matters to be brought directly to the board where they involve uh, significant policy, legal, or technical matters. Um, what, WACA, what WACA considers is it gives you the option to delegate to an administrative level of staff to make certain decisions. If you do that, you need a local appeal process, an evidentiary hearing at the local level um, that then depending on the outcome of that would then go to the Board of soil, Water and Soil Resources. So a two-step process when you do delegation. Uh, that can be efficient because when you delegate, you don't have to touch every application and the vast majority of applications are not going to get appealed. But where you do have these significant technical policy and legal issues and the likelihood of appeal seems, uh, seems a little bit higher, it actually could become inefficient because now you have staff at one level making a record and, and, uh, and going through it and then at your level you're doing a second you know, evidentiary proceeding and then potentially all of that goes to Bowser. And so uh, in discussing this with staff, uh, there may be Wetland Conservation Act applications delegated where uh, it, it may be convenient or important or uh, justified to bring it straight to the board. And because your policies didn't provide that as an option, we're recommending a change just to include that as an option as well. We did a little bit of housekeeping on the two uh, prior resolutions, uh, basically combining the, the, the best of both and then this new resolution will then supersede those. So you can also clean up your policy manual also instead of having uh, two hanging resolutions out there, uh, both of which have, which have been superseded. Uh, and subject to your questions, I believe there's a uh, draft of the, the policy attached uh, beginning at page 76 of your packet. Just in regards to the changes for the new uh, resolution that was handed out to you this morning, I can point those out. Uh, as John was uh, <coughs> saying, it, uh, basically it's, it was implicit that it could come back to the board at the administrator's discretion, but now it is explicit in our re resolutions. So the two changes that were done and, and were handed out to you here at the close of it, uh, bottom of page two. So the first further that you see highlighted there on the screen with the, the corrections was just a rearranging of the sentence uh, to eliminate or to create clarity, eliminate ambiguity. And the second sentence, mm -hmm. or further I should say, uh, originally included a uh, language for a referral, uh, but it's uh, been removed just to make it clear that the administrator doesn't need a referral. The, the board is the LGU, the decision maker, and if he deems it appropriate, he can just bring it straight away to the board. So those are the two changes that resulted in the document in front of you. Okay, any questions for Nick or John Colby? None. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, <clears throat> I'll make a motion. This is to approve resolution number 2019-13 uh, for the Rice Creek District, uh, Watershed District Board of Managers, and our resolution is delegating authority for the exemption, no loss, wetland boundary and wetland type determinations, and for certain replacement plan amendments under the Minnesota Wetland Conservation Act. 
with the resolves that are further, that the board retains all authority for replacement plan and wetland banking terminations, except as stated herein, and further, on the basis of policy, legal, other consideration, the administrator in his or her judgment may elect not to exercise the authority delegated herein, in which case the board will act as the decision-making body and its decision will be subject to appeal as the WACA provides. And finally, this resolution shall, shall supersede resolution 04-14 and 2009-07. Second. Motion and second. Correction, 0410 and 2009. 0410 and 2009-07. Okay. I just want to make sure it's correct. Okay. And we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? It's a roll call. Roll call. Waller? Yes. Aki? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Wegeman? Uh, yes. And Sorry. Again. Motion passes. <laughs> Can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Annual report. Bill? Wanted to be an attorney. Oh. What is the revised morning? <laughs> morning, President Preiner, Board of Managers. Um, so, three, pursuant yeah. to the Minnesota Rules, Chapter uh, 8410 uh, 0150, uh, we need to complete an annual report um, and submit it within 120 days of the beginning of the year. So, it's time. <laughs> uh, the staff has been um, very busy uh, this year, and I think it's evident in their report. Um, I think the content, I believe, the contents of what you're seeing is um, kind of evidence of of the projects and the great work that we're doing at the district um, at many levels. Um, so it will include an assessment of 2018's uh, annual work, um, projected work plans for the upcoming year. Uh, which is which we're in now, so 2019. Um, there's some other um, criteria that's required, such as uh, the material on the audit and and some housekeeping things like that. There is an evaluation component in the plan that that they started that Bowser started to require a few years ago. Um, and what we're doing, kind of as part of that evaluation component, I think that we will see it become much more. Um, authentic and vibrant starting next year as we're implementing the watershed management plan. Um, we, we, because we're very project based and, and we have a lot of ways to both quantitatively and qualitatively <coughs> evaluate our success, um, we've, been, we've been kind of processing success that way. Uh, the watershed management plan, however, will have some other um, kind of goals and steps that we'll do. And so uh, it's really anticipated that the 2019 process will look a little bit different than what we've been doing because we'll really use the watershed management plan that you've all been developing um, as our guide, um, more so than just following this template that we've used in the past. Uh, all in all, you'll see 13 activity reports and work plans. Um, it did come to you this year with not quite as much editing as we've done in the past. So um, as you'll see on the, um, on the motion that we've, the, with the memo and the motion is, you know, we're looking for content approval and then we're still kind of going through to make sure commas and periods and, and formatting uh, will, look, will look good. Um, you can and have that discussion here, but um, I always welcome if you've, if you've done some editing, we would, I would love to, to have you send that to me as well. So. In other words, you'd like us to review it now and do a little, as you said, editing. Hey. Some of you really, Just, some of you read like an editor, yeah. and so <laughs> right. those comments are always welcome. I understand who that is. <laughs> it doesn't hurt the content at all, I know it. it of course, Mr. Bradley might find out a comma here or there does mean something different than the way you were trying to have it read. Recently enough, I did. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> He's already been at it. Well, of course, I th thought I had to be prepared for the day. So if you prefer I sent them to you in writing, I will do that. That may be. I mean, it That's is fine. up to your discretion. I'll be glad to do that. So you can okay. hold back if you'd like and just send no, it to me. as long her. as I get it. Oh, let go. Let, 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 let And we may have. We may. all just, you know. 
But, but the biggest fun one was when you repeated the same section twice. But <laughs> oh, that <laughs> oh, was that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we may have caught some of these Maybe errors already. Very, very <laughs> important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? So, Madam President, I'll, I'll make a, a, a short comment here about it. Um, mm -hmm. It had to do with the drainage portions. What page? On page 140, for example. Okay. It says that there's a uh, 218 work plan but there's no 218, 219 work plan. All the other sections have like 218 activities and yep. a 219 work plan, and we don't have a 219 work plan here uh, on that section on that page. And then also on page 92, I didn't see any mentions of uh, JD3 or, or possibly 5 in either of these places. And those are, I don't, I don't, although it's 20, we are actually, I ask, I'm going to assume we're going to be doing more work on on three this year. Sure, so, I can follow up so, with Tom so, on that. Yeah, that's just um, just uh, the only comment I have about that section is it, it didn't fit the format on uh, 140 there, you know, if you look at all the other sections. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Thank you, Beth. Can I ask JD3 and JD5 specifically? Were those the two that you were well, asking about? Yeah, with? those are two particular ones. I mean, I, there may be some others that you want to look at, but those caught my attention immediately. Mm -hmm. I can follow up with Tom. Thank you. And, and you see, you didn't have a section that said 219, you know. And you know, and I, I, I yeah. Um, that, that kind of, I was wondering, that's it all. You can <laughs> check with Tom with it. I, We'll just leave it down. Yeah. I think he usually has a separate work plan, so I can make sure he gives I, me a better summary of it for this. Mm -hmm. Madam President, I, I will also put this in writing, but that's also true for the wetland management discussion. There's no 2019 discussion at all. Okay. That's on pages uh, 55 and 56, which, by the way, you repeat again on 57 <laughs> and 58. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's what this is for. It's a mm -hmm. positive comment. Right. Not usually. <laughs> I like that, but all done. <clears throat> Why is it duplicate? Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Are you going to give me a motion or no? <laughs> <laughs> Can, can I, I get the application and let her do the corrections? Yes, we can do that. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the 2018 annual report with any necessary formatting and non-material changes and changes that were suggested today and authorize submission to the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Second. Motion man seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Matt? <clears throat> no, we have to, we still have that number three on the agenda. We went, um, yeah, there was a number three that had to do with the administrator, whack and no loss. Was that? <clears throat> I thought we did that. We did that. We did that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, did did that. That. yeah we did do Sorry, it. everybody. That's what I, that number three handout says to you. Oh, that's right. Gotcha. Sorry. <clears throat> no problem. Thank you. Okay. Matt, go ahead. Okay. Madam Chair, Board of Managers, I'm here to talk about Curly Leaf Pondweed today. So beginning on page, I believe, 150 of your packet, there is a memo from me. Uh, the memo references an example cost share agreement that was inadvertently omitted from the original packet, but I think was handed out. There's nothing really, rem yep, this morning. Yep. It handed out this morning, thank you. That, there's nothing remarkable, really, about the cost share agreement. It's kind of standard language, but just for your reference to see what one looks like, that's an example that was handed out. Um, so the, the board has seen, I think, these slides before that reviews quickly why we manage curly leaf pondweed and the mechanisms, how they impact water quality. But, you know, I spent some time on the slides, so I think I should be able to use them twice. So I'll go through them real quickly so you can see them again. So again, the purpose of managing curly leaf pondweed is to improve water quality, namely reduce algae blooms by promoting um, native plant growth in lakes. Curly leaf pondweed is an invasive aquatic plant, uh, very common around uh, the Rice Creek Watershed District, very common around Minnesota, especially the metro area. You can see a picture of it there. Um, that's actually a picture of George Watch Lake uh, with wow. curly leaf pondweed matted wow. out. Uh, so here, here's some slides that, that kind of show 
how curly leaf pondweed works, why it creates a water quality problem, why we want to manage it. So unlike native plants, curly leaf pondweed is a winter annual. It begins growing in the fall. All of our other plants, of course, die in the fall and begin growing in the spring. Curly leaf pondweed begins growing in the fall, uh, survives under the ice, although that is variable based on the severity of the winter. So when we have a, a more severe winter, like the one we just went through, typically there's a little bit less curly leaf pondweed because there's less light attenuation through all of that snow and ice. Uh, so more of the curly leaf pondweed dies. In a milder winter, uh, typically we would have a lot more curly leaf pondweed in the spring. But that's kind of a rule of thumb, not a hard and fast rule every year. So when ice comes off in the spring, as it is right now, curly leaf pondweed is already growing. It has a leg up on all of the native plants. It grows very quickly and can get very dense. Oop, wrong way. So by early summer, it can be just a monoculture, you know, one species of nothing but curly leaf pondweed uh, matting out at the surface. Now, while the curly leaf pondweed is there, it does provide many of the functions that a native plant does. That is, it stabilizes the sediment on the bottom of the lake, and it provides a refuge for zooplankton. Zooplankton, there's a picture of one right there. Um, they're tiny little bugs that eat algae. So more zooplankton is good because it means less algae and clearer water. <clears throat> However, curly leaf pondweed then in midsummer, usually around the 4th of July, it all dies. So that mass of curly leaf pondweed that is now grown in the lake dies, decomposes, releases all of the phosphorus. So in that way, it kind of acts like a phosphorus pump, pumping phosphorus out of the sediment to grow and then dying and decomposing in the water. Further, it leaves a big void where you had nothing but curly leaf pondweed before. Now there are no plants. And so we have resuspension of um, phosphorus and sediment off the bottom of the lake. Also, we lose that refuge for zooplankton, so the zooplankton are picked off and eaten by uh, panfish. Um, so that's how it can, uh, curly leaf pond, we can make algae blooms worse. So what we would like to do is manage curly leaf pondweed in the spring, and we've been doing this for many years now on some lakes. Uh, we've been using herbicide. So we're applying herbicide in the spring within the next couple of weeks. Uh, knocking down the curly leaf pondweed and promoting native plant growth, which of course survives throughout the course of the summer to provide those vital functions. Uh, just a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, Roshanau Lake is in, in the city of Lionel Lakes. This is a lake where we've been doing curly leaf pondweed management since about 2005, so a long time. And we've been very effective there at knocking down the density of the plants from when we started managing it. Um, you can even see there's a couple years in there. Uh, we'll see it in a second, actually. Uh, but there were a couple of years in there where we just don't have to do treatments. Likewise, on Bald Eagle Lake, we've seen a dramatic reduction in the number of acres that we need to treat. Uh, for many years there, we were treating nearly 100 acres, and now we're in the 15 to 20 to 25 acre range. So by treating it year after year, we've been knocking down uh, the amount we need to treat, and then of course the cost associated with that. So speaking of cost, the memo that I provided has a pretty detailed table. I provided it here just to highlight, and there's a lot of information here, but just to highlight a couple of uh, bits of information. One is that uh, every year we're, we're uh, presenting this table with an estimated cost. You can see 2019. This is an estimate based on what we've seen the past few years, and this is a worst case scenario estimate. So, for example, on Rochanel, last year, we actually asked the board to allocate money to treat uh, curly leaf pondweed. And when we go out and do our survey, we don't find enough to treat, we don't do it. So the amount of money that we're asking for is a worst case scenario. In recent years, we've been actually spending far less. A um, couple of other notes. New this year, we are switching uh, herbicide. I suppose that doesn't mean a whole lot to the board. They're both approved by the EPA for use in lakes. Uh, but the herbicide that we have been using, the costs have been skyrocketing, and the DNR is suggesting uh, a new herbicide for early season treatment. Okay. So we're, What's the change, Matt? Uh, the change is from endothol to diquat. Similar herbicides, uh, they both act in the same way. I've been told by DNR that if anything, diquat breaks down a bit faster and persists uh, for less time in the lake, which is a good thing. Uh, the last note I'll make is that the costs that are presented here are split between the Rice Creek Watershed District and the lake groups, which is why you saw the cost share uh, agreement in there. 
So, so the motion that you have, the, the second motion there for 38,500, that is the total cost, which we pay up front. Uh, and then we are reimbursed by these late groups to pay for their half. So the actual worst case cost would be 19,250 to the district as, after those reimbursements. And I believe that's all I had. Any questions? Any further questions for Matt? Okay, we need motions. So you need both motions? Yes, please. Correct. Okay. I make a motion that uh, we move to authorize the administrator to enter into agreements with Rossnow, Rossnow, Centerville and Silver Lake cooperatives to cost share on curly leaf pond weed treatments. That is, uh, I guess that's what it is, yeah. Second. Motion man seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next motion. Mm -hmm. We authorize the administrator to enter into professional service agreements with Lake Management, Inc. for com chemical treatment of curly leaf pondweed on Roshnow, Bald Eagle, Centerville, and Silver Lakes with the total contract cost not to exceed $38,500. Second. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good going. I'm going to be curious to see what happens when you've changed your chemical. And now you are, too, going to we find too. out what it is. Yes. Because it looks like it's been pretty effective, even though, as you said, it's getting very high in cost. Madam uh, President, you could do that. Just, is Lake Management, Inc. a new company? For you? I thought you used to use a different We've switched, uh, uh, Madam Chair, Manager Bradley, we've switched from year to year based on quotes that we've received. So we've worked with a number of different companies over the years, but the, all the ones we work with have been... Good professional. Done before. a good job. Okay. okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Okay. I believe it's Nick. Yes, President Priner, Board of Managers. Uh, today, for your consideration, on page 154 of your packet is the Blaine Water Tower uh, Compliance Agreement Adjustment. <coughs> we did discuss this at your last uh, board workshop. It is a shift of the certain date for compliance of the site. Uh, you'll see the, the amendment on page 55 of your packet and where the rubber meets the road would be item number four. The agreement currently notes November 27th, 2020 and that would be changed to September 30th, 2021 based on the city of Blaine's uh, uh, review of their plan project and the increased cost, which was the reason for their request. Um, Nick, the motion that's here, uh, we don't state any time on the frame. It's just generally just authorized to sign a compliance agreement. I noticed up here in the on page 154, of course, it says November 27, 2020. Then you just said it's changed to 9-30-2021. Should anything like that be mentioned? We don't care in the motion? Uh, I, I think it would just be fine to say... Um, what you've written? First Amendment to the agreement. Manager... For, uh, not intending to make a motion on your behalf here. <laughs> Manager moves no. to authorize the district administrator to sign the... First oh, Amendment right of two agreement okay. uh, with any further nods. Okay. God darn. All right. The First Amendment. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the First Amendment to the agreement. No. Uh, the motion is on the bottom of page uh, 154. I know 154. Okay. Yeah. So it says yeah. to sign the compliance agreement. And I then can uh, refer to this in the dates? Uh, no. Uh, President Priner, Manager Hockey, I just suggest that in the second line of the motion, it, it starts, it says compliance agreement. Right. Just say first amendment to the compliance agreement. There okay. Go. Gotcha. I okay. I'm going to say this quickly here. before I forget what you go just ahead. said. <clears throat> I, author, I would like to make a motion to authorize the district administrator to sign the compliance, to sign the First Amendment agreement to the compliance agreement to the compliance agreement with any further non -subst substantive changes in advice of council. That's good. Second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
<laughs> Madam President, just want to point out to the audience that we discussed this at length in a workshop, and, and this delay is not causing any harm to our water quality or quantity in the interim. That's correct. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we'll move on. Catherine. <clears throat> We see her all the time, don't we? <laughs> oh, poor Laura. Good morning, President Preiner, managers. Uh, at the April 8th, 2019 board workshop, the board agreed to move forward with quote number 145466A for the large conference room in the amount of $7,163.57, or quote A, and quote number 145520C for the remote locations in the amount of $295.97, or quote C, from Tierney Brothers, quote number 21379, dated April 3rd, 2019. So uh, based on the board consensus at the two recent workshop meetings, staff recommend that the board authorize, one, the acceptance of Tierney Brothers quotes A and C as attached, and two, staff to work with legal counsel to develop a policy for remote participation for board consideration at a later meeting. Any questions? Any questions? Barbara, this is yours. I know it is. You're <laughs> going to add me. This is a self-interest one, isn't it? I, it does us all well. It'll for be all very, of us. This is yes. good for all of us. <clears throat> um, I'd like to make a motion that we move to approve Tierney Brothers quotes A and C dated April 3rd, 2019, and number two, authorize staff to work with legal counsel to develop a policy for remote participation for board consideration at a later meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for following us through, Catherine. Thank you. Yes, thank you. 171, Horse Lake Local Water Plan. There we go. She's got her water bottle with her, too. <laughs> That's what, like a 15 minute, 20 minutes you're going to take with that water bottle? <laughs> Good morning, President Preiner, Board of Managers. For your consideration today is the City of Forest Lakes local water plan. In your packets, you'll find uh, see on page 174, the draft resolution, the executive summary on page 176, the identified issues starting on page 177, and then the City's CIP table on page 184. City of Forest Lake submitted their local water plan to all agencies for formal agency review on January 8th of this year. Staff are the district reviewed for consistency with the district's watershed management plan and Minnesota rules 8410 and Minnesota statute 103B 235. And the district and my council both submitted comments on the plan. The city's final draft submitted to the district on April 15th of this year sufficiently addresses all comments and is now consistent with uh, district and state requirements. The city has identified a few water resource issues within the district boundary, which include uh, water quantity and water quality issues. And again, this starts on page 177 in your packets, sections 5.2.1 and 5.3. And um, the city has identified that there is uh, flooding at between Highway 61 and 190th Street North and uh, limited discharge capacities and surface flooding on the main trunk of branches three and four <clears throat> of Judicial Ditch Four, or JD Four. The continued, um, the uh, capacity issues at JD Four are heightened due to continued future development of that area. City is also, uh, city also drains to several impaired waters, um, including Hardwood Creek, Clear Lake and uh, White Rock Lake. And the city is also involved in the Upper Mississippi River Bacteria TMDL and the Peltier and Centerville Lake TMDL. To address the water quantity issues, the city would like to continue working with the district on drainage improvements at 190th Street and to continue working with the district on a, a Judicial Ditch 4 uh, watershed analysis and development plan. These are uh, in the CIP table on page 184 and on this slide here. The city will also partner with the district on judicial ditch for um, improvements that are as a result of the analysis. To address the water quality issues, the city would like to, uh, or the city is planning several stormwater reuse projects which will benefit the Peltier and Centerville Lake TMDL and improve the water quality at Clear Lake. These uh, stormwater reuse projects include uh, one at the Lila School uh, near the Headwaters Development, 
Everton townhomes and at the city's um, city center. The city will also um, continue implementing its enhanced street sweeping plan, which was a partnership with the district and Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District. Overall, staff find that the City of Forest Lake's local water plan is consistent with district and state requirements. Staff recommends approval of the City of Forest Lake's local water plan as submitted to the district on April 15th of this year. Any questions on this one? No questions. Madam President, so where's ditch number five in the report? Ditch number five. Let's see here. Seven is mentioned, four is mentioned. Five has been a long-standing issue up there. And I didn't see it mentioned. Since the outlaw outlet has been demolished and filled in, you know, and we've had numerous complaints over many, many years about it. The so city didn't I'm, include that in this. Yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. but the district should be a, a, a team play here, and the district should uh, bring that to their attention, that that needs to be included in their plan. That's what I'm asking. Okay. And uh, let me see what else did I have this anyway. Oh yes, and uh, maybe you might mention to them that they have because number five and number seven in, enter into number two in their part of the world, and two bends up there. That might be also be something that they take a look at. If two doesn't function for for uh, an outlet for five or seven, <coughs> then they have a problem. And so that should be a concern at least for them to, to look at. Should we hold off on the resolution until this has been discussed with Forsyth? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, everybody? Okay, so we, we don't well, have to act on Should it. I make a motion that we table this until well, some of the questions have been answered? Or just do, uh, do agree by consensus? I think well, we, I, Mr. I, Smith, we can just agree that it should just be Just agree by down. consensus we're holding it off? Or should I make a motion? Go ahead. Madam President, Manager Hockey, it's the board's discretion. You, you can choose okay. to take no action with direction to staff to investigate yeah. this okay. issue and bring it back. I think that's adequate. Well, let me ask this question first, Madam President. Are there any deadlines here that you're hard up against? There are, um, but they, um, they aren't soon. So I think we have some time. You have some time to yep. take a look at that? Okay. And maybe we can see it within the next, within the next two weeks. Maybe. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Then let's just, just do that. Just send or just... Thank you, Lauren. Set it aside. Go back to that then. Yes, thank you. Okay, City Fridley. Mr. Waller, a good, good um, catch, since you know that area so well. All right. Second plan for your consideration today is the City of Fridley's local water plan. Uh, you will find in your packets, starting on page 188, the draft resolution, the executive summary on page 190. The identified issues starting on page 194. And the city CIP table starting on page 201. The city does have quite a few projects in their CIP table, so I'll only be including a couple today uh, to highlight. City of Fridley submitted their local water plan to all agencies for formal agency review on December 21st of last year. The district again reviewed for consistency with the district's watershed management plan and Minnesota rules 8410 and Minnesota statute 103B 235. And the district and Met council both submitted comments on the plan. The city's final draft submitted to the district on April, 5th, or April 11th uh, of this year sufficiently addresses all comments and is now consistent with district and state requirements. The city identified several water resource issues uh, that are present within the district boundary which start again on page 194. And these include flooding, water quality issues, and the city is fully developed, and certain parts of the city are lacking um, stormwater management and treatment. There is currently flooding at several locations in the city, including around Norton Creek and Moore Lake. And the city drains to a few uh, impaired waters, which include East Moore Lake, Pike Lake, and Rice Creek. And the cities involved in the Upper Mississippi River Bacteria TMDL and the Southwest Urban Lakes TMDL. To address the flooding issues, the city would like to <coughs> work with the district on Norton Creek improvements. This is number 35 in their CIP table on page 209. 
And the district did recently approve cost share assistance for a Norton Creek watershed study, um, which will begin identifying potential uh, improvement opportunities um, at Norton Creek to help mitigate the flooding. This city would also like to work with the district um, to reduce flooding at Moore Lake through Moore Lake Park water quality improvements, which is number 44 in their CIP table and on this slide here, and through um, Westmore Lake outlet control improvements, which is number 42 on, on their CIP table and on this slide here. To address the water quality improvements, the city would like to uh, work with the district on implementing water quality improvement and water quantity improvement projects in conjunction with the city's future street reconstruction projects, uh, in including um, potentially implementation of the district's uh, or projects identified in the district's Southwest Urban Lakes Phase Two study, and this is included um, as number 26 in their CIP table. Um, and on this slide here. And then the city would also like to work uh, with the district on water quality improvements along 69th Avenue in the city, as well as um, evaluating uh, regional stormwater treatment opportunities uh, throughout the city, uh, which they've included as number 60 in their CIP table. To conclude, staff find that the city of Fridley's local water plan is consistent with the district and state requirements. Staff recommends approval of the City of Fridley's local water plan as submitted to the district on April 11th of this year. Thank you, Laura. Any questions for Laura? <coughs> Any questions? If not, I'll have a motion. Resolution. 2019-12. Uh, Madam President, I move that we approve resolution 2019-12 to approve the Fridley local water management plan. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We roll call Waller? Yes. Hockey? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Wegeman? Yes. Craner? Yes. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you and we'll plan to act on four slate at their next meeting if possible. Yes. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Check register. Madam President, I move to approve the check register dated April 24th, 2019 in the amount of $296,400 prepared by Redpath and Company. Second. Motion man seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Staff reports. Any question on any of the staff issues? Chris, anything new in the engineering department? Madam President, I don't have any updates. Nothing new? Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to the calendar. Any questions on the calendar? Jeez, this looks like an easy one. Should yeah, say, it's should just, say that it out loud. Sounds like, it sounds like <laughs> a usual. All right. Layout. So that's fine. Manager's update. Manager Bradley. Uh, don't have anything other than note that I've got the CAC coming up on the first. Okay. Manager Wagman? Nothing. Manager nope. Waller? Nope. And it's all no, so we need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I didn't expect it.